Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2019 in Budapest, Hungary, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio this morning by Coral Manton, who is a co-founder for Women Reclaiming AI. Coral, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by uh, perhaps talking about the digital gender divide. Um, what is it and, uh, um, and, and, and why, why should we be concerned? Um, I think, yeah, there is a digital gender divide. Uh, and I think that starts right from education. Um, my other job is I'm a lecturer in creative computing uh, and our course is 90% male. Uh, and I think that's seen across UK universities, computing courses are generally um, more, uh, uh, there are more men on the courses or young men on the courses. So then right from then, people going into jobs and into the jobs market, there's just much less women uh, for recruiters to bring in. And then when you don't have women at the seat of the table uh, designing systems that affect our uh, everyday lives, um, there can be some design issues then that um, uh, kind of um, favour men in a sense. So if you think about certain products, like uh, there are some uh, fitness trackers that came to the market without tracking things like the menstrual cycle, which for women is really, really important. So that would be um, something that would be a big bonus by having a woman at the table or, of course, Google Maps. Google Maps famously uh, directs people to walk through parks at night. Uh, and again, if there was a woman in the design team, maybe uh, these um, products wouldn't leave uh, and go to market with d d these kind of design choices that, that um, don't always work for women. And how early is the digital divide starting then? I mean, because it seems that, that boys and girls are given similar opportunities to learn these subjects at school, but perhaps they're not being encouraged further along the line. Is that right? Yeah, I, th I think it does start in school. I think um, I can only really speak about the UK, but I think there is a, a perception that um, computing is a, is a boys' topic. Uh, and I think that needs to change, and it is changing. So even at university level, uh, when we look at our, who comes to our open days, we struggle to get uh, uh, women uh, to sort of come and, and, and just recruit. So um, yeah, it does start at school, unfortunately, but I think there's, there's so much work happening to change that. Yes, I mean, ITU itself is involved in, in Girls in ICT Day. It, it tries to encourage girls to look at uh, technology options in, in, uh, in uh, technology and, uh, and, as I say, obviously tries to encourage them and mentor them along further down the, the line as well. But uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the session that you were in yesterday uh, about uh, AI and, and gender bias. I wanted to ask you, how, how does it manifest itself in, in AI in particular? So the um, area that I'm particularly interested in uh, through Women Reclaiming AI, uh, which I started with my co-founder, Begita Arga. So we should say, obviously, AI, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, yes, yeah. um, is conversational uh, AI. So uh, it's quite well documented that, um, uh, well, on the whole, uh, voice assistants default to a female voice. They were designed with female voices and female personalities. And there is a pervasive depiction of AIs in assistant roles as women. And this reinforces traditional gender roles that um, women have been fighting hard against. And as um, it, it's uh, said that between, I've, I've heard different statistics, but around 11% to 22% of uh, people working in machine learning are women. So there's, there's far greater uh, number of men. So uh, when men are then designing these voices uh, and deciding how uh, women should sound, they're making um, what's described as a 1950s secretary. They're making uh, almost uh, a fantasy that, that doesn't work for the female population. Um, and we feel that by having women uh, at the seat of the table, uh, women in there making these design choices, uh, we'd be able to critique more how the voice assistants sound. And the voice assistants uh, get a lot of abuse from users, and there's been a lot of problems with um, uh, when a voice assistant gets abusive language. It kind of 
is very docile. It capitulates, it, you know, and, 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 and um, speaks in a way that doesn't help uh, other women and young girls to feel really, really positive about themselves. And the other side of that is that um, voice assistants are less likely to recognise your voice if you're a woman because they're largely tested on men. Right. So, and then if you think about that and other diversity issues in terms of um, ethnicity, uh, various accents people have from their socioeconomic background, there's a lot of barriers to participation uh, when uh, our voice assistants uh, are trained on quite, you know, one specific voice. So there's a lot of work happening now, but a lot more work needs to happen so that everyone has equal access to uh, a voice interface that's going to affect the rest of our lives. It's amazing because I mean, actually, uh, I noticed the other day my voice assistant, who happens to be a male voice actually, mm -hmm. and uh, I, um, I think he it lost patience with me because I, I said something and he went, "Yes," like that. <laughs> so it was quite, uh, it, it was quite interesting how it had been programmed. Perhaps it hadn't been programmed that way, but certainly it, it did seem to be a little bit irritated with me. But I wonder if, if a, a female voice assistant would be as, as irritated or perhaps more patient. I don't know, but uh, you know, I mean, that, that's fascinating stuff. And and um, I mean, you, you, you've you've talked a, a little bit about uh, a reclaiming AI. I just wanted to to ask you what what drove you to do this, apart from, of course, uh, the very great need, which obviously you're, you're mentioning. Yeah, so um, both myself and Begita work in um, quite male spaces. We work in technology. Uh, and uh, when we uh, noticed um, the voice assistants uh, and the language that they were using um, and the, the way that they were being spoken to, and we were sort of thinking about how this then affects women within a workplace. You know, when you have a voice assistant or in your home and you hear this woman's voice and, and you hear the way people speak to it, you know, as, as a woman, that's, that's quite difficult. So, yeah, we decided to start uh, our project, Women Reclaiming AI. We started it with no, no funding. We just went off and uh, started running workshops, bringing women together um, to talk about uh, what AI is, demystify AI a little bit um, to, uh, and then um, to teach them some basic skills and how they can create their own voice assistant uh, and then we uh, that gives them access to ours so we have around a hundred women now writing and editing uh, our voice assistant we've got a shared platform by which they can do that uh, and uh, through writing the voice, voice assistant we're actually really starting to think about what is a feminist you know what is this what is this powerful woman uh, and and we're kind of developing a collective intelligence on, on what it is to be a woman which is really interesting uh, and we're kind of developing this really interesting um, feminist data set of, of lots of uh, our own language but also quotes from women uh, we admire. And so this voice assistant, will people be able to use it on their, on their phones, on their tablets? Uh... So it's very much a protest so it's not um, functional in the sense that it will tell you the time. Uh, some, a lot of what's in there currently is inspirational speech. So uh, a lot of uh, people, you might ask, what is feminism? How uh, do I stay strong in certain situations? Why don't women work in technology and lots of things like that? But at the same time, uh, one thing that came out of our uh, workshops uh, was that women felt they would like a female voice in their home that wasn't constantly available. Uh, so sometimes you might ask it something and it just says, no, I'm busy, and just turns off. So <laughs> right. there's a lot, right. of, a lot of humour in it, yes. you know, it's yeah, really yeah. fun. No, that's, that sounds very exciting. And, and, and how can people join these workshops and, uh, and, and, and get involved? So uh, our website is uh, womenreclaimingai.com. You can contact us through there. Uh, we do put up where we're doing our next workshop. Uh, at the moment, they're mainly in the UK. Um, but next month we're starting a training program, so uh, we're going to uh, invite other women from the collective and also other interested women uh, to come and train. And then they can bring women reclaiming AI to their own communities. Uh, we hope to use it more, uh, especially with younger women in schools, uh, and, and so we can um, expand the project. Cause it, as much as it is about um, upskilling and also um, activism 
it's also about community building and building a really uh, engaged community of women who can advocate uh, for what we want in technology. Well, it sounds brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. I wanted to finally ask you just the last question. What's the value for you of attending events such as Telecom World? I, mean, I know that obviously you participated in a session yesterday, but have you found it interesting? Have you found it uh, of value to be here? Yes, yeah, and this is my uh, first time uh, uh, at Telecom World, um, and I was in invited uh, to do the panel. But um, it, yeah, it's been invaluable, the, the context that you meet, uh, really interesting networks of people, very global networks. Um, also, uh, to come and find out about some topics that I'm interested in but don't know a lot about. I, I was in a session about autonomous vehicles that I found uh, fascinating. Um, and then also to be able to share our projects uh, has been you know, really important to us and we've, we've been able to share it amongst uh, people who are leaders in that area. Coral Manton from uh, We've Been Reclaiming AI, thank you very much for joining us and hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.